Well, we are in the midst of a series on the spiritual disciplines, sometimes called living disciplines or spiritual formation, whatever the buzzword might be. It is so important for us to engage in spiritual exercises. Physical exercising is of some value, but spiritual exercises are transformational. Of course, we've already started by talking in a series of videos about the Lord's Prayer, what's commonly referred to, at least by me, as the Prayer of Jesus. Later on, we're going to talk about something called the Jesus Prayer, but that's something different altogether. Right now, I want to mention that encountering examples of great women and men of prayer. I have to admit that I am so often discouraged rather than being encouraged. And I'll explain why. It's because of how unlike them I really am. So often when I wake up in the morning and the responsibilities of a, another pressure-packed day rush through my mind, sort of like an avalanche, I simply grit my teeth I strap on my boots or my shoes, and, and then I try to power through the day imbued by my own fragile energies. Little by little, however, there has been a change, and I'm succumbing to a power, an energy that is beyond my own power, beyond my own energy. The roaring of the avalanche is being mooted by a mighty rushing wind. The Tin Man, to use well, a C.S. Lewis illustration, is being turned into a real man. I don't know if I dare say it. I'm being transfigured into a son of God. This is how C.S. Lewis put it. He said, the real Son of God is at your side. He is beginning to turn you into the same kind of thing as himself. He is beginning, so to speak, to inject his kind of life, his thought, his zoe into you, beginning to turn the tin soldier into a live man. And, of course, this is not some kind of a famous counselor or pastor or teacher that's changing my sensibilities from one thing to another. This is Jesus Christ himself, who is, to use the words of C.S. Lewis, turning the tin man into a true man. Yes, he's God. He, he's the one who spoke and the limitless galaxies leapt into existence. But he's also very much a man. Not one who is dead, but one who is alive forevermore. And not only alive, but active. He's actively transforming me into a likeness of himself. Lewis, when he spoke about this, pulled no punches. He said that Christ is turning you into a different sort of thing, into a new little Christ, a being which, in its own small way, has the same kind of life as God, which shares in his power, his joy, his knowledge, and his eternality. Now, how does that work? Well, as we've been talking about in this series on prayer, it begins with prayer. To pray is to experience union with God. The, the biblical example is like a branch that is united to the vine. The Apostle Paul oftentimes pointed out that anyone who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with the Lord. And this union, though a profound mystery, is a way by which we are joined with Christ, by which we have life. We are, we, we, we are not to experience a kind of spiritual death. We are to experience life. And that's exactly what the saints in the Faith Hall of Fame were talking about in Hebrews chapter 11. They would far more gladly experience physical decapitation than spiritual separation. 
And yet, without the primacy of prayer, spiritual separation is just as inevitable as nighttime follows day. So, in in light of the majesty of union with God through prayer, the word facts, F-A-C-T-S, will serve us well as a marvelous structure for daily prayer. In place of merely snorkeling in the surface waters of prayer, this acronym, which I'll go through in subsequent uh, times as I present more and more videos on this, it, it provides me with a means by which I can dive deep beneath the tumult and turbulence of the ocean surface it, it provides me with a place that is silent and serene, a place in which all of my harried requests may give way to the quiet of union with the lover of my soul. I, I gotta be honest with you. I, I learned to pray backwards. I rushed into God's presence with a laundry list of prayer requests and then I would rush back into my frenzied lifestyle. I treated my Lord with even more impatience than I oftentimes treat my treasured loved ones. And so I was in desperate need of a paradigm shift. To begin with, I needed to make prayer a priority, to realize that prayer is a power source without which I would soon go dark. The next video, I want to talk to you about the F in the acronym FACTS, which reminds you of the word faith. For me, this is a wonderful entryway into prayer. See you in the next video.